What is up guys? Right now what you're looking at is a couple of pictures of the Losi MTXL that I owned previous to making this trade. And I'm just cycling through these photos of it here. Maybe a little sound clip of what it sounded like running. So that was my MTXL, and I traded it for this. This is the Losi 5T 2.0. I never in a million years would have thought somebody would have traded me straight up for a Losi 5T for my MTXL, but they don't make that truck anymore. This one they do make. One of the main reasons why I wanted to get out of the MTXL is because I couldn't really drive it. I was nervous to drive it because parts are really difficult to find for it. And parts are very plentiful for the low C5T. Well, they're easier to get than they are for the MTXL. One of the reasons that I was able to get this truck, I feel, if you look at the body on this, it's actually in really, really good shape. Uh, the previous owner said he had recently replaced it, but then suffered a bit of a rollover and kind of broke the plastics here a little bit. Just put a crease in it there, scraped it up here. But overall, the bodywork is all but brand new. There's a little split down here. Now, this thing did look beautiful. Actually, I'm filming this in reverse. I just had this thing out running, ripping around. You'll see that in, in just a little bit. But uh, the deal... Couldn't have gone better. I thought at first it was a scam, honestly, because who would want to trade an older truck for something like this? And come to find out this thing needed a few things. We'll, and we'll go over those, but uh, it wasn't exactly a uh, running and driving truck. When I went to do the trade, we got there and this would not start. It, it would backfire. It had really good compression. I knew it had spark because of the backfire. I knew it was getting fuel because of the backfire, but it would not start. Uh, previous owner could not get this to run. My MTXL, on the other hand, did start, and I got that thing to run and uh, had no problems. So I think that was one of the reasons why it made it a fairer trade, I guess, if you will say. Um, the reason this would not start, and uh, one of the things that the previous owner kept doing i'll show you here let me take the bodywork off all right so under here you can see it's got an upgraded servo it's got a high-tech servo in it over the stock uh, low c servos apparently the low c servos aren't the best but so it's got an upgraded steering servo throttle and brake servo is still low c but whatever I, my my truck i always had the low c stuff on there i added this outer wares cover it did not have that. Uh, it had the Bartolone pipe on it when I got it. And when the previous owner was trying to start this, I saw he kept coming down here and he kept twisting the screws on the carburetor, the high and low needles. And uh, one thing I do know about these is those adjustments are super sensitive. An eighth of a turn makes a big difference. Um, so... What I did when I got this from him, he the truck actually did not start when I picked it up. So it did not run at all. I took it back to my buddy's house, Scotty. Big shout out to Scotty for uh, taking me down there. He made the trek with me to uh, make this happen. Uh, so big shout out to him for uh, hooking me up on that. But all I did is I downloaded the manual. Where is it over here? So I downloaded the manual here and I just look through to the carburetor settings and there just downloaded printed that off the computer downloaded the carburetor settings set these screws to the initial settings and then replace the spark plug with a brand new one and this thing two or three pulls it fired right up 
and it ran ever since ran really good so all right so when i got this truck he had already paired his receiver to this truck and he had a more advanced receiver than i have he actually the cool thing is my low c mtxl came with a dx2e system so i have this and then the receiver which i can't remember what the receiver is it's not important but it's a spectrum receiver for the spectrum radio and all i have to do now is set endpoints when i first got it these were kind of all out of whack uh from what i've seen you want to have the servos as close to center as possible so you get the best sweep especially on steering you want this to kind of be equal sweep uh side to side you know so i took this off this servo arm off here centered it as best i could and just basically did that by turning on the transmitter turning on the truck and you know once everything set up i just took this arm off let that receiver center there and same thing with this and then i kind of put both the arms on where they were centered so now what i have to do is reset endpoints because this receiver is set up for my mtxl which i believe is going to be slightly different on this truck and i had to print off the instructions from the mtxl so here goes nothing now i'm assuming you do this with the truck on so i'm going to try and set up the camera in a way that you can see what i'm doing all right so i didn't explain it i want to set up endpoints and that's where parts stop moving i think i got some leaves down in there that's where parts stop moving. So you see, I turned the servo there. I'm checking for two things. One, if that servo is being pushed on and actually forced one direction when I'm turning it, that's not good because you're overworking the, the servo and it can eventually cause damage. And two, if I'm not getting enough sweep, then my wheels aren't turning as far as they can, which you know would affect how sharply I can turn with this. So that's what setting your endpoints does for steering. Now for throttle and brake, when I hit the throttle, I don't want it to pull so hard that it actually pulls on the carburetor, but I also want it to go full throttle. And then vice versa for brakes, I don't want it to yank on the brake so hard that it pulls on the servo as you can see my brake endpoints i don't know if you can see that moving but it's actually pulling the servo which is what you don't want so i'm going to go through the process to set up the endpoints so then that way i get the most out of everything and least stress on parts all right so the way they tell you to do this you want to hold the trigger full brake you want to turn the steering wheel full to the right and then you want to, with your third hand, power on your transmitter. And then that should blink. So once that blinks, now I could set my endpoints. So for the throttle. All right, there, that's a little bit better. So at full throttle, I'm just going to move the throttle trim. And we'll see if I can get more throttle. So that's all the way open. So you can see it better here. The actual throttle arm. So if I turn it one way, it gives me the most throttle. Turn it back the other way, less throttle. So I'm gonna go the whole way. So it's not overworking the servo, but I'm getting the maximum throttle out of it. Right about there. And then release it so that gives me throttle now i'm just going to go through the rest of the process and set it up all right so now endpoints are all set so if i steer it i actually was able to get a little bit more steering out of it left and right that's good they actually and the nice thing is he fitted it with a nice high-tech servo on there so it's got a little bit more a little bit more power and control over stock the 
throttle set up. Now it's going full throttle. I didn't show you the before, but now it's going full throttle now. And then the brakes it still does move the servo, but it's not as aggressive as it was. And I do have some tunability out of these rods here so I can make it more or less aggressive. But if I push it, it stops. So brakes are working. Everything else is working on there. Uh, after tweaking the carburetor, like I said in the beginning, you know, we're ready to rip this thing around. I only got to run it around a little bit so far. So I'm going to run it around a little bit more and see if I find any other little odds and ends wrong with this. But so far, it's just been a lot of uh, setup stuff. And again, like I said, I, he had a different controller before, so he probably had the endpoints all set up on his controller. I just had to reset them up on, on this controller here. All right, now before we go out and run this thing, uh, excuse my well pump for kicking on there. Uh, one of the things that drives me crazy about stuff is when things aren't done properly, I'm a little OCD when it comes to that stuff. Now I don't look for perfection, but I look for it to be at least correct. Now when this was described to me, it was described to me as the body was perfect and almost brand new. But as you can see, you got some scratches here, uh, scratches and cracks here. I noticed a split body work down here. So not big deals. The other thing I noticed is on the body work itself, I'm scratching it right now. So I don't really, the scratches don't concern me. It's just the way it was explained. It was explained as if it was brand new body work. These little captured collars back here they were missing in various spots especially along the tops here where they just ran the screw through the top collar and it didn't capture it in the bottom so the bodywork was pretty loose around there and what that's going to do is just over time it's going to pull the bodywork through the hole there so I went, I went through, also the screws were all mismatched. They didn't have the proper screws in the proper holes. Now everything matches. It's where it's supposed to be. I ended up even printing out the owner's manual offline so that I got the proper screws in the proper place. But that was just one I little OCD thing with the bodywork. I should have left it off and drywall tape and shoe glued it, but I'm gonna just run this thing for this video. And then I'll probably do that later on. But yeah, that was just one of my little pet peeves, little OCD. I don't know how you guys feel about that stuff, but that stuff kind of drives me crazy. All right, so now that I got the body squared away, I'm just going to do one last thing to this before we take it out for a rip. I'm going to put a new air filter on it. Uh, I don't like to service the air filters. I've done it in the past, and you can kind of see here as an example what this one's doing. Over time, if you just keep washing them, these start to fit looser and looser. They lose a little bit of that elasticity that they have. And, you know, if it's kind of loose on there, it's not really a pre-filter, is it? Dirt and debris can get right through in there. So I typically just buy a new air filter set. They come two to a pack. This is $20 free shipping uh, from eBay. There's the part number if you want it. Um, so typically that's what I do. I just buy the, uh, OEM and then as a little bit of protection, added protection, this should help with dust and debris. I'm just putting an outerwear sleeve on there. Uh, it keeps the majority of that dirt off of the filter. So you don't have to change these filters as often, you know, this, I can wash this, <clears throat> these can be washed over and over again. And, and I haven't had any issues with them because they actually clamp around the back of that. Uh, and who cares if a little bit gets past this, the filter is what I'm more worried about, but this is kind of that barrier that helps. Uh, and the other thing is it gives it a little bit of water resistance, in my opinion, in my experience. It doesn't make it waterproof, but water will beat up on this, uh, and it keeps it out of the filter, soaking into the filter. So this, you know, you can kind of splash through some puddles with this. You don't have to worry about sucking water into your engine. So I'm going to get this on, and then we're going to go out and tear it up. Boom, on and looking nice. She's ready to go rock and roll now. Let's go have some fun. All right, got to fill her up before we go. 24 to 1 mixture. I don't know who else likes to do this, but anytime I have a two-stroke or gas-powered vehicle, I like to put a little bit of a scented fuel additive. 
Uh, I'll put a link in the description to below where I got this. Alright. how easy this thing is to start. It's just cold today, isn't it, Uh-huh. I'm already freezing and shaking the camera.
So it's back from our little bash session there. I wasn't too aggressive on it. Suffered a couple of shots to the front there. I don't know if the video picked it up. Bumper took it like a champ. Frame still seems to be straight. No issues there. It's still nice and straight. I mean, it's it's strong aluminum. You really gotta you really gotta dig it into the ground from some altitude to give it some issues. Plastics held up really well. It is very cold out there. That's why I sh cut my run short. I don't know. You probably could have heard the kids in the video saying they were cold and wanted to go home. Um, yes, it was with the wind chill factor in there. It was pretty cold. My hands were starting to uh, not work properly, and I did not want to crash it. One of the things I am going to have to do is go back in and readjust the brake set up or maybe just turn these in a little bit the brakes were a little bit soft it wasn't stopping very nicely so or or should i say it wasn't stopping as nicely as i would like it to so if i would have had anybody run out in front of me they probably would have got run over because i wouldn't have been able to stop in time so that's the only adjustment i have to make other than that truck ran really good this thing did amazing i did splash through some hidden puddles and like I said, this offers just a little bit of protection. If I take this off, my air filter is nice and dry. You know, it's not dirty. So <coughs> they are a little pricey. I think these are I paid 40 bucks for this cover, but well worth the money. Like I said, it, it's going to help in those little splash ups. But um, yeah, I'm going to make those minor adjustments. And then hopefully uh, get the boys together and just take this thing out for an actual rip. I drove it for about 20 minutes to a half hour till we were cold and, you know, used a little bit of fuel. So I'm going to give this a once over, check all these screws, make sure they're tight. And in the next video you see of this, we'll take it out ripping again. I don't know where we're going to go, but right where I was ripping today was kind of fun. So awesome. Thanks for checking out the video, guys. As always, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Subscribing is free, and it helps me out, especially on these more expensive uh, endeavors here. Uh, but thank you. If you guys do have a low C yourselves, drop some comments below, things you've done to your RC car. Um, I'm always looking for ideas as far as upgrades or uh certain setups that work really well maybe a uh, carburetor settings for that pipe to uh, maximize the performance uh but yeah there she is traded a d or uh, yeah db traded a mtxl for a low c5t and i don't know i think it was a pretty good trade what do you guys think